My name is Katie Paul and I'm the Chief of Staff at the Antiquities Coalition and I will be discussing today new methodologies for visualizing data, uh, identifying patterns and solutions for culture under threat. The looting and destruction of culture has been a problem for millennia for cultural and religious sites. But the acceleration of this activity in the Middle East and North Africa since the Arab Spring destabilization has reached unprecedented levels in re recent years. The 2011 Arab Spring forever changed the Middle East and North Africa. As instability rose, conflict spread, and economies dramatically dropped, there was a significant increase in the industrial looting of antiquities and destruction of culture. Threats to countries like Iraq and Syria have made more press in recent years due to the ongoing conflict and widespread deliberate destruction by groups like Daesh. But countries facing crisis rather than conflict have been left out of the discussion. Egypt and Tunisia in particular are both nations who have suffered significant economic crises since 2011, and they are key to understanding the patterns in the region. In 2014, when Daesh rose to significant power in Iraq and Syria, the group systematically destroyed cultural heritage sites across the region. UNESCO sites and Christian monasteries made Western press, but what is less commonly mentioned in Western media is the destruction of Islamic sites, which are destroyed more than any other group. With the sectarian violence rising and the campaign of genocide taking place across the region, it's necessary to look at the wider region and understand the variety of threats to both people and culture and how to combat them. Oftentimes, history can provide us with insights into these types of destructive activities and how not only were they carried out, but resolved to help guide us towards solutions that we can use for today. However, the current level and, dis and deliberate and seemingly indiscriminate destruction taking place in the Middle East and North Africa by groups like Daesh and al-Nusra is unlike anything previously unseen in history. Even during the Arab conquest, relics and manuscripts were translated and preserved rather than destroyed. As we move forward toward looking toward solutions, we must think creatively, innovate, and most importantly, collaborate. We're facing uncharted waters. In the same way historical data is used to map and illustrate conquered territory and spheres of influence, we can use the data available in the rapidly changing global environment to understand the spheres of influence at hand in the current crisis facing the Middle East today. However, in compiling this data, we are no longer relying on historical accounts or material evidence in the archaeological record. The data used today is compiled from up-to-the-minute reports from media, journalists, NGOs, and most importantly, activists on the ground. By compiling the information from eyes on the ground in real time, we're able to get a better understanding of what is to come. That means that to protect heritage today, archaeologists not only need to understand this landscape, but this one and this one as well. The Millennium Project emphasizes long-term solutions. These solutions with regard to culture, crime, and terrorism cannot be developed without a broad-reaching examination of heritage alongside the socio-political landscape of the region at large. Addressing heritage destruction must involve an understanding of threats to regional and national stability. With this regional challenge of culture under threat ranging from economic crisis in Egypt to civil war in Syria and full-blown terrorism insurgency in Iraq, solutions to protect culture must be on a region-wide scale. Heritage experts are working not only to track the destruction of heritage sites, but the funding sources that fuel these activities. Only one of those sources, cultural racketeering, is intimately linked to the destruction of both monuments and people. Cultural racketeering is fueled by a multi-billion dollar international market in art and antiquities with high Western demand. Therefore, it's vital that the international community engage in cross-disciplinary transnational efforts to combat looting. At a time when the United States is in political turmoil of its own due to shifting political administrations and is rethinking its role as world police, it's important to remember that the threats to culture and people in the Middle East are driven in part by Western demand. The United States makes up 43% of the global art and antiquities market, thus serving as a major driver for antiquities not only on the licit but the illicit market as well, a market that is benefiting the very terror groups that the U.S. and the anti-ISIL coalition are working to fight. The deliberate destruction of heritage sites by groups like Daesh is also not a phenomenon that's totally disconnected from the West. Several Daesh propaganda videos were produced with the West and particularly the U.S. in mind. This deliberate destruction is not only a matter of ideology, as is so often discussed, but also serves as a form of free propaganda. Where U.S. media outlets may not show beheadings of, by, of hostages, they will readily show the demolition of an archaeological site, disseminating propaganda courtesy of your local news station. 
The Millennium Project has several goals that can in incorporate sciences and heritage into solutions for the future. But two goals stand out when it comes to combating terrorism in the MENA region. When examining the conflicts in the Middle East today, cultural heritage is not simply a casualty of war. It's a tool for propaganda, a source of financial support for terrorism, and a means of magnifying the psychological impact of genocidal conflicts on varying populations. Our ancient past is no, matter just a, is no longer just a matter of academia and archaeology. It's a weapon of war. And as such, it cannot be looked at from a purely academic perspective. It should be examined like any other source of terror financing as a threat to both economy and security. For many years, there's remained a gray area between the wealth of knowledge held by academics and the policymakers who have the power to put that knowledge to work. The Antiquities Coalition's culture under threat campaign is seeking to close that gap. The campaign is focused on raising awareness among government officials as well as the public while providing recommendations that can be taken to mitigate the thre these threats to heritage. The current cultural crisis is not just an issue of heritage protection, but of cultural identity, economic stability, and foreign policy and national security. The national security threats posed by antiquities trafficking in the Middle East and North Africa have gained attention of both the U.S. government and governments in the MENA region. Through our work in convening leaders from the MENA region, it's clear that protecting cultural heritage is one, if not the only, issue that Arab countries agree on. It's a topic with political and strategic weight without dividing along partisan lines. The Antiquities Coalition has not only been working to raise awareness in the government sector, but we have been developing interactive resources that, can o that are open to policymakers and the public to help provide a better understanding of the scale of heritage threats in the region. Combating the trade from both the market nations in the West and the source nations in the Middle East and North Africa is critical to having a marked impact on the trafficking of cultural goods. Both the West and the Middle East have a shared interest in regional and global economic stability and combating terrorism. By using open source information, including data source from militant social media accounts, we are able to use terror groups' own cyber tools against them. Each time a group produces propaganda related to heritage, we are able to date, analyze, and map it to add to the growing pool of information to better understand their patterns of activity and develop solutions to combat them. The Culture Under Threat map is one of our most comprehensive interactive resources. It illustrates all reported incidents of deliberate destruction of cultural heritage in the Middle East and North Africa since the Arab Spring destabilization. By compiling information from activists, governments, media, and organizations like the ASOR Cultural Heritage Initiative, as well as our own research projects, we are able to provide a wide-scale view of the destruction taking place across the region. The map only uses publicly available data, so no sensitive or potentially unknown sites are further exposed to illicit networks. The goal was to create a tool that, used, that was useful to policymakers and academics, as well as the public, without creating a roadmap to sites. The map incorporates a timeline function which allows us to view the dated incidents in any combination of data sets, providing an examination of patterns in time progression. Not only were we able to quantify the data across the region, but also understand the types of patterns that are occurring over time. This map is being expanded to focus on looting as well. We're currently in the process of developing a layer that focuses on incidents of looting from some of the highest source countries in the MENA region for antiquities trafficking to further identify potential activities that can be useful to both source country and demand country authorities. Working with experts in a variety of disciplines, including counterterrorism, we've identified patterns in the movement of destruction and deliberate in the movement of deliberate destruction focal points across the region. An illustration here of the still images of the map's hotspots from 2012 to 2015 illustrate the movement of cluster destruction patterns from west to east, beginning in North Africa two years before ISIS became a household name. Mapping threats on Armenia region-wide scale mean, yields new means of visualizing the widespread destruction of heritage in relation to known hotspots of terrorism holdings, trafficking flows, and demographics of likely offenders thus providing data toward developing targeted solutions and protecting culture under threat. We've used two different mapping technologies with varying capabilities. The map you see here is our earlier iteration. It overlays a heat map of terror-controlled areas in conjunction with destroyed sites as well as UNESCO World Heritage sites. The inclusion of UNESCO World Heritage and tentative listed sites gives a glimpse of the scope of heritage at risk without providing locations to lesser known sites. All UNESCO site coordination is available publicly on their website. In this map, the terror group hotspots also have interactive pop-ups featuring data identifying primary and secondary sources of funding for various terror groups. 
With antiquities as a targeted source of funding for groups like Daesh and al-Nusra, experts can more easily identify which hotspots of terrorist-occupied areas may pose a greater risk to heritage sites within their proximity. The regional reach of these threats requires regional solutions that must go beyond the confines of archaeology. These Millennial Project goals require cross-disciplinary international cooperation for success. In May 2015, the Antiquities Coalition partnered with the Middle East Institute, UNESCO, and the Government of Egypt to hold the Culture Under Threat Conference in Cairo. Foreign ministers and ministers of antiquities from 10 Arab League nations convened to begin steps toward active solutions in combating the issue of cultural racketeering. The conference concluded with the issuance of the Cairo Declaration, which called for the establishment of a regional task force to take on these issues. The task force held its first meeting in September, on September 8th in Amman as we convened the second Cultural Under Threat Conference in Jordan, in partnership with the Middle East Institute and the Jordanian Foreign Ministry. The meeting nearly doubled the country attendance from the previous year, with ministers from 17 Arab League nations attending. The conference issued the Amman communique, along with an agreed-upon action plan outlining five steps the MENA task force would take in addressing the issues of culture under threat. The first focus is capacity building. The MENA task force will work with border and patrol, uh, border patrol and customs in their respective countries, as well as regional cooperation, to organize training programs on identifying illicit antiquities and promoting cross-country cooperation. The second focus is cultural MOUs. The MENA task force agreed to work with Border Patrol um, and Customs in respective countries, uh, as well as work on MOUs to negotiate the demand country MOUs. These bilateral agreements allow countries to cut off the in incoming antiquities from nations of crisis. They also agreed to submit a formal request to the Arab League to explore and potentially negotiate MOUs with demand countries on behalf of all Arab League member states thus helping issues in nations like Syria that are deeply entrenched in crisis, yet politically remain outside of many of the negotiating mechanisms for establishing solutions. The third focus is the information sharing mechanism. Transnational trafficking networks are operating successfully in the region because these activities are more coordinated than some country-to-country -country relations. The task force agreed to consider creating a mechanism, such as a task force secretariat, that would serve as a clearinghouse for information sharing. The information sharing would be amongst the membership on issues such as upcoming antiquities auctions, major seizures, research on trafficking routes, training programs, and other efforts that will benefit from regional cooperation. The fourth focus was on an awareness campaign. The task force agreed that their International Advisory Council will submit a task force uh, proposal for a campaign to raise awareness in both demand countries and source countries on the importance of not buying or trafficking cultural antiquities. The final priority in the action plan that the task force agreed upon uh, would be the Heritage Jobs Initiative. With many crises in the region surrounding economy, jobs creation is vital to solutions that reinforce stability in nations facing crisis. The task force will support programs that promote job creation through increased protection of heritage sites as well as encouraging sustainable and responsible cultural tourism. There has never been a war on culture as systematic as that fought by ISIS. We see this slide again. Heritage is now part of the wider threats plaguing the Middle East and North Africa. Cultural property has become a pawn in propaganda, and terrorism financing and antiquities have been the subject of legislation targeting funding sources for terror groups. But heritage also has a role to play in peacemaking and driving solutions to some of the most pressing crises in the region. As we move forward to bring international community players together to protect cultural heritage, the role of archaeological activists and the public are critical in spreading awareness on this issue. The world continues to globalize, and so have the challenges and obstacles that stand in the way of peace. Archaeologists are used to analyzing history, but with few historical comparisons, we are in the position of watching history be made. We must innovate and step beyond the traditional bounds of archaeology to keep up with the changing world and have an impact on the new histories being written. Thank you very much.